for this Spiral Abyss run. So this run has been very, very fun. And because, well, I went back to Akasha Data. Yes, Akasha Data to basically find out what the most popular teams are in this Spiral Abyss. Um, specifically the third period of Spiral Abyss, aka the third rerun of 4.5 Spiral Abyss. So, I will put up the stats on the screen to show you guys um, those stats right now. So, um, as you see here, for the third period of Spiral Abyss, we have Farina, Zhongli, Nuvalet, Yelon, Kazuha, Navia, and then we also have Chiori as well since she is a new character. Baiju, Kokomi, Nahida, Shingcho, you know, the works, basically your typical characters that you see in Spiral Abyss, so yeah. But, um, the most usage that we have seen is Farina, and that is true for basically every Abyss up above 4.2. So yeah, she is extremely good. I mean, you saw it there, you saw it everywhere if you see Spiral Abyss videos. Farina is just way too busted for her own good. So yeah, those are the stats and the usage ratings for this uh, period of Spiral Abyss. And now it's time to actually explain my team comps for this Spiral Abyss. So, here we go. The first half, well, as you see, there's the team right there that I used. It is a Nouvellet Hyper Carry team, but instead of using Baiju, you use Charlotte. And that is because in the first half of Spiral Abyss 412 on Chamber 2, there is are husks and if you know what the husks abilities are if you get hit when you have a shield up the husks activate their mechanic where they do a secondary effect so yeah you do not want to get hit if you have a shield up so that's why people usually um go for other characters other than shield characters if they are facing a husk so yeah that's the reason why people use charlotte over Baiju for this abyss because Charlotte at least has an AoE heal and besides she also causes freeze and freeze is pretty good too um, for this abyss as well since uh, most of the first half uh, enemies are basically frozen you can't freeze them they are not bosses so yeah the only boss that you have to deal with for the first half is just the uh, robot dancing duo so yeah that's basically it and also you see here that is not the only team that um, people use for this abyss. They also use the Baiju variant, which is um, slightly harder since they will activate their mechanics if you do get hit. Um, if you do have Baiju shield up. But Baiju can periodically get rid of his shield, so you can basically have windows where if they hit you, they don't activate their mechanics, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, so you can either use the Charlotte variant or the Baiju variant. People also use a Hyper Carry Raiden team. With Raiden, Yelon, Farina, and Jean. Jean is also a AoE healer, which is pretty good. I could see why people use Jean a lot. She has her usage rating up the wazoo now because of Farina. So yeah, um, Jean is a surprising pick for a lot of people since people think that Jean is bad. Nope, Jean is actually pretty good with her AoE heal. It's actually pretty busted. We also have a Kazuha Hydro team aka Kazuha Mono Hydro with Kazuha um Kazuha Farina Yelon and Kokomi so yeah um that's your typical uh premium um Mono Hydro team I did use it on a previous abyss I could just link the video at the outro so if you want to check that out you can but um yeah the Mono Hydro Kazuha team is actually pretty good too um big damage and Farina's uh, buffs are pretty good too. And then last but not least on first half, people also use the Nahida Hyper Bloom team with Nahida, Shinobu, Yelon, and Shingcho. It's pretty good too. Kuki is going to be your um, healer while Nahida is going to be your main dendro applicator with Yelon and Shingcho as the uh, Hydro sub DPSs. For those uh, bloom reactions and then shinobu is just gonna be using her e to do some hyper bloom reactions so yeah these teams look pretty good on the first half um so yeah those are your statistics for the first half of this period of spiral abyss now it's time to move on to the second half so as you see here the most used team on the second half is the hu tao double hydro team aka hu tao's most popular team so yeah it consists of hu tao zhongli yelon xingqiu so yeah um, well, the main strat for that is literally just pop bursts, and then you pop, um, 
Zhongli Shield to do damage, and then you do uh, Hu Tao E to do charge attacks, and then just do vaporized damage. So yeah, still pretty good to this very day. I mean, Hu Tao is still probably one of the best Hydro, or probably one of the best Pyro DPSs in the entire game. But who knows, because the next version, well, you already know who's coming next version, Arlen Sino. So yeah, well... I don't know if Hu Tao's gonna be uh, still the reigning champ for the best uh, Pyro DPS in the game, but only time will tell. So yeah. Also, another team that people um, like to use a lot for the second half is the Navia double Pyro team, which is what I used on my first run of this abyss as well. So yeah, um, it consists of Navia, Zhongli, Xiangling, and Bennett. So yeah, the double pyro is just for the attack boost with Bennett and Shengling being a pyro applicator so that uh, Navia can just get her crystallized reactions. Shengli, of course, for the shield, and then Navia is the main DPS. So yeah, pretty standard team. Does a lot of damage. Pretty good. So yeah, nothing really uh, resists Geo in this abyss. So you can just literally just slap on Navia and then she does like a bajillion damage. So yeah. Also, another popular team people run is the Raiden National Team. And if you already know the National Team, then you probably already know why people use it a lot. Because it's literally the most free-to-play friendly team in the entire game. With Raiden, Xing Chou, Bennett, Zhongling. So yeah, um, National Team broken. And it'll forever be broken. It's just way too good. So yeah. Also, there is another Navia variant that people use as well in the second half, which is Navia Farina. Bennett Zhongli, but instead of it being a hyper carry Navia with double pyro, it's a hyper carry Navia with Farina support. So, yeah, people use her as well. Um, they use both variants, uh, it really depends on what your team needs, but both of them perform their jobs really well. And last but not least, this is a surprise, I don't know, but people actually use Wanderer in this abyss. So, yeah, in the second half, I'm actually surprised people use Wanderer. Uh, Bennett, Zhongli, and Farazan. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. But the only problem is that for Farazan to work, you have to have her C6. So yeah, if you want to do the Wanderer comp, then you have to have Farazan C6. But other than that, it's pretty surprising to see that people actually use Wanderer in this abyss, which is pretty, pretty surprising. So yeah, um, I forgot to say the disclaimer, um, but it was already too late now, so might as well say it before, um, it gets out of my head. So yeah, um, these statistics are just when I checked back then. It probably changed as soon as this video is uploaded. But as of right now, that I'm checking right now, these are the stats that you see on the screen. So yeah. But that is basically it for the team comp explanation. I mean, pretty simple, right? Um, I just used the most popular teams in the Spiral Abyss. And I just ran with them. And well, I was not disappointed. They destroyed the Abyss. So yeah. And now, it's time to actually talk about the characters on the team. So yeah. Well, for first half, we're going to be going over the Nouvellet team that we ran um, for this Abyss. The most popular team. So yeah. First off is our newest member of the roster, which is Nouvellet, which I did summon. If you haven't checked that video out, you should check it out. Um, my Nouvellet summoning video, I will just put it in the outro of the uh, video, so yeah. But anyways, here is Nouvellet, 32,000 HP with zero EM. Yeah, I don't have EM on him because I focused, or hyper-focused on HP, crit rate, crit damage, as you see here. I'm still building him um, right now, so his stats will change probably, depending on how lucky I am with artifacts. But um, as you see here, this is what his stats are right now. So 32K HP, Crit rate, crit damage is pretty good. He doesn't need ER because he gets a lot of Hydro Particles anyway. So yeah. As for his weapon, I have Tome of Eternal Flow, which is his best weapon. His free-to-play weapon is the Wit Sith. So if you want to run a free-to-play friendly version of the weapon, you can run the Wit Sith. You can also run other weapons as well. I can show it here. You can run um, Lost Prayer. Lost Prayer is pretty good too. I did mention you can run the Witsith, which is also pretty good as well. If you want to run him with a lot of HP, you can also run him with Prototype Amber. If you are, if you have money, you can also run Solar Pearl, which is pretty good too. So it really doesn't matter what you run him with. He's pretty good with basically anything you give him. So yeah, um, pretty nice. As for Artifact Set, 
I have four piece Maratrice Hunter, which is his best set. There's no other set you would run on Nouvellet unless you are crazy and want to do double HP. So HP, HP. But uh, Maratrice Hunter is pretty good on him because his mechanics make it so that he loses HP. And since you lose HP, you get crit rate increase, meaning that he's able to do crit damage all the time. So yeah, this is his best set, no doubt. As for Constellations, I am at C1. His C1 is just way too good to pass up, so that's why I got it. I mean, you get interruption resistance on your charge attacks, and also you get a boost on your stacks on, specifically this. So yeah, pretty good. I mean, you're able to do damage, big damage, so yeah. And as for talents right here, 866, still leveling this up. I mean, look at this. I don't even have mats for it. So yeah, I'm just grinding it out, basically. Trying to get him to at least uh, triple crown before I'm able to uh, work on his artifacts again. But as of right now, he works fine. So yeah, um, that is my Nouvellet build. Pretty, pretty simple right there. Next up is our girl, the Hydro Archon herself, Farina. So yeah, Farina hasn't changed either. I mean, she has high HP, 28,000. She doesn't need that much HP because I have her at C2. Spoiler alert. But uh, that's the reason why I don't have her at 30k HP. Crit rate crit damage is pretty high. ER is pretty high because she needs to get her burst up as soon as possible, which is why I have her at 197 ER. As for weapon, I have Splendor of Trinkle Waters. This is her best weapon. Her free-to-play weapon options are pretty um, limited. And by limited, I mean two. You literally only have two options. So you can either get the Fisherman's Sword, which you get by fishing in Fontaine. Or you could be a 1.2 player who played in the Dragonspine update and get the Festering Desire. And by the way... People say that uh, they don't know uh, when I played this game. I can prove that I am an OG player because I do have the Festering Desire. So yeah, uh, this is the Festering Desire. Pretty cool weapon. You can run this. If you want um, Frida to have more EM, you can run this or this. You can also run other options too. If you want to make her a DPS, you can run this. This is pretty good. Um, you can also run Wolf Fang, which is pretty good as well. If you want her to have ER, you can run Sack Sword. It, it really doesn't matter what you run her with. She runs with anything that you give her. Um, but the uh, sword that I was talking about is the Fleur of Sandre Ferryman, which is the sword that I was talking about. This basically gives you additional uh, elemental skill crit rate and also increases energy recharge after an elemental skill. So yeah, that is also one of her weapons. That is the weapon I'm talking about when I said Fishing and Fontaine. So if you fish on Fontaine, you can get that weapon. If you are an OG player, you can use Festering Desire. Or if you're like me, who is a uh, frequent spender, you can run Splendor of Tranquil Waters. So yeah. As for artifact set, I run Golden Troop. Pretty good. I mean, it's her best uh, artifact set if you are running a sub DPS Farina. Because when she's off field, her elemental skill damage gets increased. So yeah, pretty uh, basic. Uh, artifact set. You can run other artifact set as well, like uh, Hydro HP or HP HP if you are crazy. You can also run Maidens if you are running a healer Farina. If you want a healer uh, sub DPS hybrid, you can run Oceans. So yeah, it really doesn't matter what you run Farina as. She performs really well regardless. As for Constellations, I have Red C2. Um, her C2 basically unlocks her full potential because she gets accelerated fanfare. And starts with 100 and you also increase the fanfare limit and her c2 literally just accelerates it it accelerates it faster than what it normally does so yeah it's pretty good and also if you're above the fanfare limit you get hp increase so yeah that's the reason why i don't have her at 30k hp because she gets it naturally so yeah and as for talents 6 10 10 her normal attack sucks unless you have her at c6 because if you have her at c6 you can literally make her a main dps yeah, because she has a Hydro application on her normal attack. So if you are a bit crazy or if you are a Mega Whale and if you want Farina to be like one of the best uh, characters in the game, you can run her with C6 and then have all of this at 10 crown or triple crown. But um, I am running her as a sub, so 10, 10, 6. So yeah, that's basically it. 
And that is Farida. Pretty cool character. And next up, we have Kazuha, aka best animo character in the game. So yeah, I see here, he has basically balanced stats. I'm not joking. Um, I literally made him a hybrid of a support and a sub DPS. So yeah, uh, don't do what I did. It's either you hyper focus on one or you hyper focus on the other. What I'm trying to say is hyper focus on support or hyper focus on sub DPS. But I, I did both. So yeah. As you see here, he has 500 EM, crit rate crit damage is decent, ER is pretty decent. So yeah, it's really hard, and I mean really hard to balance these stats out. I am not joking. So yeah, don't do what I did. As for his weapon, I have Freedom Sworn. It's still level 80, it's still trying to get it to level 90, but um, it's still pretty good. I mean, it, it basically gives him um, elemental damage bonus and also increases damage as well on other stuff. And plus EM is scaling on Kazuha's Q. And his passive talents, which is pretty good. So yeah, um, one of his best weapons. As for his free-to-play weapon, do I really need to say it? It's the Iron Sting. Run it. You could literally craft it, and it runs really well. It gives him EM, just like Freedom Swarm. So yeah. As for artifact set, I have four-piece Viridescent Venerer, which is his best set. There's no other set you would run because this is literally made for Kazuha. Because you're able to decrease elemental res of the swirl. Guess what Kazuha is famous for? Yeah. He's able to increase elemental damage bonus. So, if you have a talent that increases elemental damage bonus, and if you have an artifact set that decreases the elemental uh, resistance of a character's element, yeah. You can see how ferocious that combo is. Nothing to be said. As for constellations, I have him at C0. He is one of the few characters in the game who doesn't need constellations to be good because his base kit's already good enough. So yeah, don't need constellations anytime soon. And as for talents, I have 6, 8, 10. Still trying to level this up to level 10, but 8 is fine. Um, the only main uh, level up talent that you need is level 10, uh, Kazuha Slash. So yeah, um, that is Kazuha. Pretty cool. Uh, still one of the best animal characters in the entire game. So yeah. And next up, we have we actually have a new character um, that we haven't showcased yet on this channel, and that is Charlotte. Yes, you can finally see my Charlotte build. Finally, right? <laughs> so here is the photographer herself of the Steambird, Charlotte. So as you see here, max HP, attack. She scales off of attack, so I basically uh, went all out on attack. She doesn't reach 2K yet. But if I do level her up more, then she probably will reach uh, 2k. So yeah. As you see here, she has crit rate, crit damage, ER. So she's basically a sub DPS. So yeah, I just made her a sub DPS. You can also make her a support as well if you hyper focus on attack and ER. So yeah, that works too. But I made her a hybrid. So yeah, I love to make uh, characters hybrids. As for her weapon, I have Favonius Codex. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this is literally her best weapon. I'm not joking. You could also run Sack, but that gives you EM. But ER is the way to go because with ER, she's able to get her burst up faster. And because she heals on burst, it is perfect for her. So yeah. And plus, um, I did give her uh, some crit rate. So she's able to proc the um, Bovonius Codex thing where crits have a 100% chance to give her elemental particles. And with more elemental particles, she's able to get her burst faster. So yeah. As for artifacts, I give her no blaze. No brainer. This is a no brainer artifact set on Charlotte because it gives her increased attack for all party members. And guess what? She scales off of. She scales off of attack. So, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good artifact set right there. As for constellations, I have her at C4. She is great at C6 because she's able to give um, attack for cryo damage, so she's able to become even more of a sub DPS, which is pretty cool. And also she's able to heal more effectively as well on C6. But as of right now, I mean, this is fine. C4, I mean, you saw her uh, do her magic by healing and doing a uh, cryo damage on enemies. So yeah, she is still pretty good. And as for talent, 6699 is coming from the constellation. So yeah, so basically her real stats are 666, which is basically minimally built. So yeah, there is Charlotte. I mean, you see her build right there. She is mentally built, but she's still pretty good. I mean, 
she saw her power on that team. So yeah. And next up is the second half team. And well, I already showcased this team way too many times in this abyss, so I'll probably just gloss over them pretty quickly. But um, well, not quick enough for those new pl uh, new people who are in my channel. So yeah. But here is Hu Tao. Um, for the old time viewers, she is not changed ever since. But for the new time players, as you see here. The most alarming thing about her is that she has no EM. And that's because I hyper focus on every single stat she has. So HP, crit rate, crit damage, ER. Um, you might want to have EM at 100. So at least she's able to do some damage on Vaporize. But uh, I just hyper focus on this and she's able to do numbers just fine. So it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Um, as you see here, HP, crit rate, crit damage. Pretty basic. As for weapon, I have Staff of Homa, which is her best weapon. Her other best weapon is Dragon Spain. So yeah, Dragon Spain, Deathmatch. Anyone that can basically give her crit rate, crit damage is pretty good. EM is also pretty good as well, um, aka Dragon Spain. But Staff of Homa is her best weapon, no doubt. As for artifact set, I have Four Piece Crimson Witch. This is still her best artifact set, which is pretty sad. <laughs> because she's only able to proc this Four Piece set once. Yeah, I'm not joking. Once. And besides, it has a max of three stacks. So you're only going to get that one stack and that one stack alone because you're only able to use your E once. It sucks. It, it just sucks. So yeah. But um, this is her best artifact set. And she's able to output numbers up the wazoo. Like 200k's and 300k's consistently. So I'm not complaining. But it is still her best artifact set. No doubt. As for constellations. I have her at C1. At C1 she is a entirely different beast. At C0 she's okay. <laughs> she's not the best parallel DPS in C0. Because... When you use charge attacks, it consumes your stamina, which is really bad. Especially if you're trying to uh, do charge attack and then dash cancel it. This means that you have to do charge attack jump cancels, which is pretty, pretty awkward to play. If, especially if you are in mobile or, I think, controller? Controller is pretty hard to do jump cancels with or da dash cancels. But, um, yeah. At C0, you have to play her in a different way. At C1, you literally just have to turn your brain off and she becomes like the best DPS in the game. Because look at this. She's not able to consume stamina on charge attacks. Meaning that you're able to just do charge attack, dash, charge attack, dash, charge attack, dash. Which is way faster than charge attack jump cancel for C0. So instead of charge attack jump cancel, you can do charge attack um, dash cancel. Which is much, much faster than charge attack jump cancel. So yeah. As for talents, I have 10, 10, 10. She was my original main. Um, she still is my main, by the way. But I, I am just experimenting with other characters. But as you see here, 10, 10, 10, triple crown. I use her a lot back in the day, and I still use her. I mean, I just used her now. So yeah. But yeah, Hu Tao, pretty good. Best proud DPS in the game. Or at least as of right now, before Arlen Sina will come out. So yeah. Next up is our boy Zhongli, aka the best shielder in the game, hands down. So yeah. I made him a support sub DPS hybrid, yes. Uh, I think you probably get the memo here. I love hybrid characters, so yeah. Um, as you see here, he has 50k HP, meaning that his shield won't die. He has minimal crit rate crit damage because his Q actually does a large chunk of damage. And I just wanted to take advantage of that. So he's able to do at least 50k on Q, which is actually pretty high um, for a uh, support Zhongli. So yeah. As for his weapon, Black Tassel is funny enough his best weapon. His other best weapon is Staff of Homa if you want to give him the crit damage. Because it gives him a flat 20% HP bonus if you give him the uh, Staff of Homa. But Black Tassel is literally his best weapon and it's a 3 star weapon. Yeah, because it has HP percent. <laughs> As for artifacts, set, I have Tenacity of the Millilith, which is his best support set because when you use an elemental skill, it doesn't have to be him, by the way. Every party member's attack will be increased and also shield strength will be increased by 30%. And guess what? Zhongli's shield doesn't die. On top of the 30%, he's just not going to die ever. So yeah, it's, it's pretty busted. Super, super busted. And also, the artifact set gives him a flat 20% HP bonus, which is also pretty busted too because... His shield is scaled off of HP, which is pretty, pretty good. So yeah. 
but Zhongli can also be ran as a sub DPS if you give him two piece Geo, two piece Noblesse, aka 20% burst, 15% uh, Geo damage bonus, I'm pretty sure, or 20%. But um, it's just geo damage bonus, burst uh, damage bonus. So yeah. As for constellations, I have him at C0. He doesn't need constellations to be good because his kit's already good. So yeah, it's just like Kazuha. As for talents, I have 6, 10, 6. Really, the only level up set you'll ever level up is this because it's the shield. So yeah. That's basically it for Zhongli. Pretty cool character. Um, still one of the best geo shielders in the game, if not the best geo shielder. So yeah. And also one of the best geo characters in the game. Next up is the two Hydro sub DPSs. First up with Yaelon right here. So yeah, Yaelon hasn't changed either for those OG players. But here's my Yaelon stats. Again, EM at zero because I hyper focus on every other stat. As you see here. HP, 30k, crit rate crit damage is pretty good, ER is pretty high, and well, if you probably already know the trend of sub DPSs, you probably could guess what her artifact set would be, so yeah. As for weapon, I have Aqua Simulacra, which is her best weapon. As for her best free to play weapon, it's the Stringless, because the Stringless is able to increase burst damage as well as give her EM, which uh, is really good with reaction damage and guess what she's good on teams with reactions on it so yeah um it's basically yaelon's best uh weapon is aqua simulacra her second best weapon is the stringless as for artifact set i have emblem of severed fate which is her best artifact set no other artifacts that you would run because her all her damage is tied to her burst and guess what it is pretty good on Yaelon, this artifact set, because it increases burst damage if you have more ER. And with more ER, she's able to get her burst back, which means that you're able to do more damage. It's just it's just a constant stream of good on that. As for Constellations, average C0. At C6, she becomes one of the best Hydro DPSs in the game because all her normal attacks become those explosions that she's able to do if you do her charge um, shot. But other than that, she doesn't need constellations if you are just running her as a sub DPS because her kit's already way too good enough. So yeah. And as for talents, 6, 7, 10. Yes, um, since I am just going to be using Yaelon for only her burst, I only just leveled that up um, to level 10. So yeah, pretty good character. Still one of the best Hydro sub DPSs in the game. Um, no doubt about it. And speaking of one of the best Hydro sub DPSs in the game, we have Xing Cho, lastly who is also a contender for one of the best Hydro sub DPSs in the game because literally Shang Cho and Yaelon are the same character. They literally have the same burst and everything. So yeah, as you see here, crit rate crit damage is pretty balanced. ER is pretty high too because he's able to get his burst back. And there is a reason why he's able to get his burst back pretty quickly. And that's because he has the Sack Sword, AKA the best sword on Shang Cho, a sword that you should run all the time because every single other sword on Shang Cho kind of sucks. Except for maybe Favonius Sword because crit or crit rates. Um, basically, if you have high crit rate, the crit damage that you're able to do gives you back energy particles. So yeah, but for Sack Sword, you can literally just do two E's and you get your burst back. And plus, at R5, it's an 80% chance, which is pretty high and pretty consistent too. So yeah, um, best weapon, obviously Sack Sword. As for Artifact Set, he literally runs the same thing as Yaelon because he's literally the same thing, which is two piece or four piece emblem of severed fate again high er burst damage shang Cho does burst damage burst damage go boom so yeah as for constellations i am at c6 he is one of the easiest characters to get c6 because he's literally a day one character who appears constantly and besides if you don't have him you can literally just buy him from the shop so yeah it's she's, he's pretty easy to get that's all i'm trying to say and as for talents i have 6 10 13 um, I level this up to level max because, well, you know, it's his burst. His burst does a lot of damage. So, yeah. And that is basically it for uh, all of my character showcases. Shing Cho, pretty good. So, yeah. And there we go. That is it for this Spiral Abyss video. So, yeah, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like down below. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And turn on the notification bell to not miss out on this single Genshin upload that I do. Again, you guys, liking and subscribing just shows the support that you have on my channel. Any amount of support is greatly appreciated. Supporting the video helps me uh, make more videos. It 
fuels my passion for Genshin Impact. So, again, thank you guys so much for supporting this uh, video and so for supporting my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So, yeah. And, well, as for the comments down below, what do you think of this Spiral Abyss? And what do you think of the teams that I use? Are you surprised about the uh, stats of these of this uh, period of Spiral Abyss? Are you surprised of the teams that I use? Are you surprised about my builds on my um, characters? And what do you guys think about my builds, my characters? Or what do you guys think about the statistics? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Genshin Spiral Abyss video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.